All right, guys, welcome back to All Things Outdoors. And today, we're gonna be heading to the beach, um, but you know, that's not what today's video is about. Today's video is actually gonna be about uh, wine berries and some of the other cool plants. But anyway, before we start, um, be sure to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. And be sure to put that down in the comments below saying that you did that for a shout out. Um, and yeah, if you have any idea, any ideas for future videos, put that down in the comments too, because I'm interested to hear if you guys have any ideas for future videos. I know I'm interested. So yeah. Um, so here we have a box turtle. I, the main reason why I stopped actually, was get, just gonna go straight to the beach, but I stopped because I saw this turtle, thought it'd be a great opportunity to put something like this in a video. So anyway, this is the Eastern box turtle. They're native to basically eastern, the eastern half of North America. And this is about as big as they get. They get a little bit bigger than this. And you can tell what they are. They basically got these nice, um, this black shell. It's These are basically kind of like a tortoise. They're not really much like a turtle. As you can see, he has a very dome-shaped shell. These are not water turtles. These stay on land only. So what they do is they... Um, they're basically like tortoises. Got big stumpy legs. This is a male. And we'll show you how I can tell that in a little bit. And um, this is um, uh, this turtle, um, he was on the road. And yeah, so these guys are native to Eastern North America and they're not water turtles, like I said. So if you find one of these near water, don't put it but it's like not in water, but it's like trying to cross the road. Uh, oh, look at that, he's moving. But anyway, do not put these guys in water. They can't swim. They cannot swim. See, he's got big stumpy legs like a tortoise. Because he basically is a tortoise. See his big stumpy tortoise feet. This is a slower turtle, but he's a male. And as you can see, he is in the middle of the road. And that's not good because like if a car were to come by, if they weren't watching, they could definitely, they would probably hit this turtle and he would die. So we don't want that to happen. So we're gonna show you guys how to uh, move a turtle if it's going across the road. Actually, this guy looks like he's gonna move across the road anyway, but if he stops, then we'll move him up anyway. But yeah, as you can see, he's very bright orange. He's got his breeding colors right now, actually. You can pick him up. Well, he's uh, not that shy, actually. He Usually they crawl under their shells. Isn't he beautiful? In a way you can tell that this is a, and this is actually the proper way to hold them, is you want to hold them by the middle of the shell in between their legs, because then their claws can't get you. And it's actually a very fine specimen here. This is a very healthy adult male. As you can see, he has got no deformities in the shell, no broken scoots, nothing like that. Usually they have chipped shells sometimes. Wow, he is really moving. <laughs> He's moving pretty fast as far as box turtles go. He is on the move. Yeah, anyway, it's probably it's during the breeding season right now for these guys. Uh, late in June, almost July. And yeah, so if you see a turtle in the middle of the road, you may be just, you know, point him back, put him back on the side of the road where you think he was coming from, but that's actually wrong. You don't do that. You actually want to put him on the other side of the road in the direction that he was facing, because if you put him on back on the same side where it came from, it's just going to try and cross the road again. And another cool thing about these turtles is that they actually have what's called a home space. And this is, and box turtles are the only kind of turtles that can do this. They basically have one area that they live in, this uh, quarter mile radius that they live in for their entire lives, and they do not go outside of their home space. And if they ever do happen to get outside of their home space, they will spend the rest of their lives trying to get back to their home space if they have to. Pretty cool. And these guys are very territorial. He is a beautiful male. Look at his beautiful colored arms and legs, this beautiful yellow shell. It's pretty cool, isn't he? 
Now there was a car just went past. Luckily, the turtle's not on the road anymore. I think he's just trying to get back to the woods. But anyway, now we're going to show you guys the wine berries. So now we're out here, and I'm at CBF, and I actually was going to go straight to the wineberry part, but I decided that I was going to show you a couple of the meadow plants growing around here. So, yeah, we're going to do that first. Anyway, in here we have some pretty cool plants that I'm going to show you guys. Let's find them. Oh, there they are. Pretty cool. Maybe we'll see them in the camera. So this is um, guard. This is Plains Coreopsis, otherwise known as Garden Tick Seed, and there's a bunch of other common names. Uh, but we're just going to call it Plains Tick Seed because that's the or garden tixie because that's the easiest thing to pronounce so yeah anyway so you can tell what it is because it's got these nice uh yellow flowers and it's growing all in this meadow here there's some over there there's some right there there's a bunch all the way over there there's one over there you can't really see it in camera but there is one eh, you can kind of see a little bit anyway so yeah you can tell what it is because it's got these nice um yellow flowers which got a kind of a i guess blackish i guess basically blackish with uh orange center and then it's got this nice red that goes around the center too some other flowers and so this and you can also see its leaves here are they're kind of thin kind of small if you find some find a plant with good foliage we'll show you that too but i haven't uh, this one has some good foliage see very uh kind of wiry looking almost which is why i love it and it actually this is actually a very beneficial plant uh it is it makes a great habitat uh it makes a great ground cover and you can plant it in your garden and it looks really nice uh a long time ago people used to use this for um for making dye and people plant it in their gardens uh, it's very easy to take care of and it likes full sun to partial shade so not too hard to take care of uh, and it is and it is native to basically uh, a good chunk of eastern or basically eastern North America and in the Great Plains it is native uh, from, commonly found growing on roadsides and other disturbed areas in old fields and stuff. We're in an old field. Um, I don't know why the dead grass hasn't like fallen. We didn't really get much snow or anything this year, so not all the grass really ever laid down yet, but it'll get drowned out because this meadow gets quite tall later in the summer. So we will do updates on it. Um, but anyway, back to the garden tick seed. Um, this is a lovely species for both ornamental purposes and pollinators absolutely love it. There have been over 34 species, or no, 20, I think like 20, yeah, 29 species have been observed using this plant, uh, like been observed like using its nectar and drinking the nectar and pollinating flowers and eating it and stuff. And it's very attractive to bees, hummingbirds, and butterflies. So if you want a lot of pollinator species, definitely would recommend the garden tick seed. Um, so yeah, that's about it for garden tick seed. Leaving the beach now, actually. Yeah, anyway, uh, bugs. Quite a few bugs. There's actually like the garden tick seeds stuff growing everywhere. So you can see there's some here, some here. It's all in here. And as it starts to bloom more, we will show it to you again. And the whole meadow is full of it. It's a good part of it. And anyway, here we have a plant that you may recognize actually. Probably have seen it, probably try to get rid of it a lot too. Anyway, this is called um, Philadelphia Fleabane. And it is native to uh, Eastern North America, and it is um, gets to be about this tall, maybe a little bit taller. It gets to be around four feet tall, five feet tall at the most, I would say. You may find some rare spe specimens that are six feet tall because they're competing, but they're usually around four or five feet tall. So it's about how tall they get, and you can tell what they are because they got these nice kind of daisy-like flowers. It's 
plant is toxic, so don't eat it, but it's not like super duper toxic. Like I don't, it's not gonna kill you if you eat, if you accidentally like eat a leaf, but like, I don't know why anybody would eat it, but whatever. Anyway, um, so yeah, don't eat it. It is toxic, but yeah. Uh, many pollinators and butterflies love to um, love to visit this species and they love to pollinate it and use its nectar and pollen and stuff. So yeah. And also here we have perennial ryegrass right here. Uh, you can tell what it is. Oh, also with the flea bane, you can tell what it is with these flowers and the leaves kind of look like this. Pretty easy to tell. But anyway, back to the perennial ryegrass can see that it's kind of got this, basically it looks like wheat. It basically just looks like wheat. So yeah. Wheat. But it is rye. Um, and it is native to basically eastern North America. And it gets to be around four feet tall at the most. Uh, I wonder if you could use it to make rye bread. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> but yeah, it's about how tall it gets. Pretty cool. Uh, I do like it a lot. And birds eat its seeds but that's about it <laughs> but for pollinators and stuff we head a little bit further up this way in the meadow Chinese clover hmm. stuff is invasive got back from summer camp today pretty fun did a lot of cool stuff oh look at this so you have these uh, wild onion things you know these and look at that, it's blooming. It's very pretty. This is the spring onion, uh, also known as wild garlic, native to um, basically, well, it's native to, um, it's native to Europe, and it gets to be around four feet tall at the most, and it, you can tell what it is, because, I mean, everyone's probably seen it, before. I'll show you. It, again, probably in the springtime when it's actually, you know, looks more like the stuff that you try to pull out. But, you know, you can tell what it is right now because it's got these big seed heads slash blooms, which are purple. And they're very pretty to me. And this one's actually a double one. I have seen, here's a normal one with just one uh, seed head. And then there's ones that have two. And there's ones that have three, and I've actually found ones that have four, but they're not that common. It's pretty interesting, actually. I wonder what causes them to have more than one uh, seed head. But yeah. Also, here we have something that you may recognize from getting it in the store. Grocery store, your local farmer's market or something like that. These are um, wild blackberries. These are Allegheny blackberries, native to uh, basically Eastern North America and they get to be they get to be pretty tall it gets to be like six seven feet tall sometimes basically go as tall as they can climb and they are a shrub I guess kind of I don't know shrub native to all oh, right I already said where they were native to but anyway you can tell what they are because they um, because of their leaves they have kind of these leaves that are usually in sets of three so don't confuse it with poison ivy but sometimes their leaves are kind of look like they're in sets of five, but these are, it, it changes. But anyway, this is not poison ivy, so it is fine to touch. Um, and also you can tell, cause it's got these like green stems here. This is an older stem, so it's not quite as new looking. Here's a newer stem. I'm not gonna walk in there cause there's a whole bunch of blackberries. And you can see it's kind of got that nice bright green color. Anyway, um, and also the fruits are edible. So you can actually plant this in your garden. You can plant just like, you probably will have to cut it back because it, it is, can be kind of unruly. Uh, but anyway, as you can see, it's growing all in here, everywhere. Not the trees, but the other small stuff we'll go over there and show you that later um and you can see it, it's got all these nice red berries right now which are not ripe do not eat the red ones they're very sour only eat the ones that are black and you can tell if they're ripe because they kind of just fall off the bush 
Mm. Just ate one. And they're very good. And also, you can tell because like if they're if you see this red one, very hard. But the ripe one, if they have a little bit of a kind of a give to them, like if they like if they're not like hard, like if they're a little bit more soft, tender feeling, that means they are good. The this one here. And also if they come off the bush easily, if they have a little bit of resistance when you're pulling them off the bush, it means they're probably not ready. See, this one here is ready. Mmm. They're super good. Nice sweet flavor to them. Ooh, here's a really good one. Look at how big and juicy it is. That was the perfect one. But yeah, you gotta make sure they are ripe, cause if they're not ripe, they're very, they don't taste too good. Tastes kind of sour. And bitter. Whoa, look at that big and juicy one that's in there. You're gonna try and get that. Ugh. Uh, almost dropped it. Uh. There are the berries, ripe berries. Lovely. Maybe we will, maybe we'll start a uh, wild foraging series now that all the fruits and stuff are ripe. Looking for edible plants. But anyway, um, as you can see, we got all those blackberries everywhere in there. And look how tall they are. The uh, stems get huge. And these are all full of berries. These ones are still green. So they're not ready to eat yet. You can tell when they're ready. Whoa, look at that. That's really deep in there, but that is such a big and juicy blackberry. And it's worth reaching in there for. Look at the size of that thing. Look at how big it is. Mmm. Mmm, that was good. That was really good. That was probably the best one. These ones are bigger. I wonder why. Just healthier. Maybe just an older bush. Don't know. Love to watch it. Pretty cool. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Beautiful afternoon, evening sun over the Black Walnut Creek. Ouch. It's hard to walk on gravel. I have shoes, I'm just not wearing them. So I like walking in the grass and bare feet. Wow, isn't that beautiful? Summer camp, it was beautiful. There was this lovely salt marsh. There wasn't really much of any cell service and we weren't allowed to use our electronics and cameras and stuff anyway, so I couldn't film. And I didn't have that much time, so we had a lot of stuff going on at summer camp. But anyway, uh, we had a uh, yeah, it was beautiful. I wish I could have filmed it. It's, it's, it was absolutely gorgeous. Lovely uh, wetland plants, rushes. It's a plant called Aero Arum weed, a native species. Everything was in bloom. Oh, look at this. Not so you can tell what they are, because look at this. They got these nice white blooms. That's also a blackberry. It's weird that they're still, that, it's weird that that one bush is still blooming. It must have just came up late. Yeah, here's a couple late bloomers. Well, that means we'll have blackberries later into the summer. Because these things pump out a lot of fruit. It's really pretty cool. But yeah. So, we'll show you the wine berries now. We're just going to head up the street, and then we will show you the wine berries when we get to them. So now we're at a different part of the road.
here we have wine berries and mugwort. This is also the area with the mugwort forest. They kind of look like mini pine trees. Like if I pick one right here, I'll show you guys. It kind of looks like a mini pine tree. Yeah, it's hard to pick. Oops. Doesn't that look like a mini pine tree just a little bit? It's not really a good one. This one here looks better. This one probably looks more, eh, nah. Let's get a good one. Ah, oh, right here. Perfect. It looks just like a mini pine tree to me. I don't know about you guys. Does that look like a mini pine tree? Like if I, let's stick it in the ground here and we'll show you. Kind of does. That definitely looks like a mini pine tree, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely does. Pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I think it's cool. I don't know about you guys. Wine berries. And you can see, you can tell what they are because they kind of got these almost leaves of three. They kind of look like leaves of three, but don't mistake it for poison ivy. It's not poison ivy. And they got these reddish stems. Well, green stems with reddish hair, but when the stems are older, you see they turn brown, but they still have those hairs. But some of which, some of those hairs are actually thorns see the thicker ones are thorns and they're kind of annoying when they get stuck in you but they're not too bad they're not like blackberry thorns blackberry thorns are nasty <laughs> those don't mess with them oh look at how fast this wisteria vine's growing this stuff grows so fast but anyway oh look at that we got a daddy long legs why are these leaves here are folded but they just didn't come out right eh, whatever but anyway as you can see um these are right now they're currently actually making fruit you can see got all these little buds and stuff and some of them have berries now this berry here isn't ripe we will show you guys some ripe ones gotta wait for this car to pass here you have some trees of heaven well i wonder what happened here oh we got caterpillars look at that there's a caterpillar in there cool that long stick thing it's actually a caterpillar. But there's a couple of them. Look at them. You can see them all in there. Must be eating the leaves. Here's another one. Yeah. And another one. Yeah. It must be eating the leaves off this tree. This is the tree of heaven. It's pretty cool looking, honestly. Very interesting leaves. Anyway. I'm going to show you some wine berries that are making fruit. Actually have ripe berries on them. And we'll eat a couple. Well, I'll eat a couple. <laughs> but if you guys have wine berries, I highly suggest you eat them. They're very good, very nutritious, have lots of good nutrients in them. And the seeds don't get stuck in your teeth, unlike uh, blackberries. I mean, they can, but not as much. But anyway, as you can see, you can basically tell what the wine berry is cut from its fruit because it's kind of got these bright red fruits, which basically look like raspberries except they're smaller and they don't have, uh, and they're, they're completely shiny. Like they don't, like raspberries have kind of that fuzzy looking stuff on it. Uh, wine berries don't have that. And this is a, basically a shrub and it's kind of, and it's native to Europe. So it is not native. It is considered an invasive species in some states, not in Maryland though. And it's actually pretty cool because see these canes here, how they're, how they're drooping. So what'll happen is a cane will shoot up and then it'll droop down. And once it, and once the cane touches the ground, it can start a whole new, like it'll root at the bottom. It'll root, like if this touches the ground, it, that end will root and then a new one will come up. It's pretty cool. See, they, they get pretty tall. Look how big that one there is. It extends all the way out. Make some good berries next year. But anyway, um, this is an edible species, um, and they taste very good. They have a very nice tart flavor. Oh, fly. Let's get him out of here. 
see the berries. Very pretty looking. It's kind of pretty. Mm. A lovely tart flavor. Now that one was, wasn't quite ripe. But this one is. See, it's got a darker red to it. It's got a little bit of leaf on it. Just take that off. Eat it. Mmm. Kind of a weird waxy feeling to them when you touch them but in your mouth Ooh, tastes so good and you can have them they're basically a good snack along the trail or bring with you put them in your breakfast cereal just have them in a bowl yeah they're very good very nice tart, but sweet flavor too. You have this neat orange thing when they come off. Pretty cool. And it basically looks just like a raspberry on the inside. Just shiny. Instead of oh, mosquito. They're just shiny instead of fuzzy. But yeah. Um, anyway, that's about it for today's video. There's the pond. But anyway, that'll be about it for today's video, and we will see. Oh, and be sure to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. Be sure to put that down in the comments below, saying that you did that for a shout-out. And, yeah, we will see you guys on the next adventure.